Hello and welcome to my final Oscar prediction video for the 95th Academy Awards. I am filming this in a hotel, so uh, bear with me with the uh, silence or less audible voice. I want to begin by talking about a major problem I have with this year's ceremony. I'm not pleased that Jimmy Kimmel is hosting for a third time, in addition to my belief that the Oscars don't need a host because the comedy bits aren't that funny and take away from the nominees. We've seen the SAG Awards this year stream online and the focus was truly on the nominees. He also has shown multiple times disdain for the nominees, such as when the mix-up with La La Land and Moonlight happened, he suggested the La La Land team keep the award that they did not win. If they wanted to keep a host despite the disaster that was last year, Amy Schumer being the worst part, I would have loved a different host, not just for the previous reason, but also he's already done it twice recently and hasn't brought in an audience, and it would be great to see someone else tackle the job. They could have got Gabriel Iglesias especially after his last comedy special. Trevor Noah could have been another great choice, but may not want to since he loves hosting the Grammys. I would actually pitch the Daniels to host next year's awards because you and I know they're not going back to the hostless years. Moving on to my predictions, I will be revealing them in the same order the nominations were announced with chapter cards for each category. For Best Actress in a Supporting Role, I'm predicting Angela Bassett to win for her role in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. She won the Globe, Critics' Choice Awards, and Hollywood Critic Award. This category isn't a lock, though, since Carrie Condon took the BAFTA and Jamie Lee Curtis took the SAG, which was assumed to go to Angela Bassett. If I was voting for the Academy Awards, I would vo have voted for Stephanie Sue because she was one of the best parts of Everything Everywhere all at once. I've been correct on this category every time, but this year I'm not 100% confident. While I earlier thought Black Panther Wakanda Forever would win Best Costume Design, considering Ruthie Carter won the f for the first film, and it started out the gate strong with the Critics' Choice and Hollywood Critics' Awards, I don't think it maintained the momentum considering it lost the Costume Designers Guild Award for sci-fi or fantasy film to everything everywhere all at once. That leaves the strongest competitor in Elvis to win the award with the BAFTA and Costume Designers Guild Award for period film. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. Best Sound, I'm predicting to go to Top Gun Maverick, which has won the Hollywood Critic Award, Motion Picture Sound Editors Award for Effects and Foley, and Cinema Audio Society Award. The film that could upset would be All Quiet on the Western Front, which won the BAFTA and the Motion Picture Sound Editors Award for Foreign Language Film. My vote would go to Top Gun Maverick. I've gotten this category right about half the time. Original score I'm predicting to go to Babylon by Justin Hurwitz, with only the Hollywood Critics Award under its belt. If any film could upset this category, it's All Quiet on the Western Front, which has won the BAFTA. I think I would have also voted for Babylon based on the limited amount of each score that I've heard. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. Adapted screenplay, I'm predicting to go to Women Talking by Sarah Polly, a fellow Canadian who has won the Critics' Choice Hollywood Critics, and Writers Guild Awards. The only major challenger would be All Quiet on the Western Front, which won the BAFTA and wasn't nominated at any other award show. I've only seen two films in this category, and of those, I would choose Glass Onion. I've gotten this right every time. Original screenplay I'm predicting will go to Everything Everywhere All at Once, with the Critics' Choice, Hollywood Critics, and Writers Guild Awards. Its biggest competition is the Banshees of Inisherin, since Oscar voters will want, it to, will want to award it somewhere, and it did win the BAFTA. Of the three films I've seen from this category, I'd be okay with either Everything Everywhere or Banshees winning this award, since both are really good films. I've gotten this right three out of four times. Moving to some of the short films, I wish I'd been able to see them, and they are somewhat available online, but I haven't had the time like I did last year. Hopefully I'll get a chance before the actual ceremony. I'll post links to where you can find what I could f find in the description below. Anyways, I think Le Pupil could win the Academy Award for Live Action Short since it has some name recognition with Alfonso Cuaron attached, but any film could win this category and An Irish Goodbye has precedent winning BAFTA, although Le Pupil wasn't nominated as alongside it. For animated short film, I'll predict The Boy, The Mole, The Fox, and The Horse will win, although again, this is a wide open category and any film could win. Both categories I've gotten right three out of four times. Back to acting, supporting actors basically 
basically a lock for Kiki Kwan with Everything Everywhere All at Once, who has won Critics' Choice, Hollywood Critics, and the SAG, with his only competition being Barry Keown for The Banshees of Inisherin, who won the BAFTA. I've gotten this category right every time I've predicted it. Best original song I'm predicting will go to Natu Natu from RRR, which won the Critics' Choice and Hollywood Critics Awards. It's also what I would consider the most deserving because, to my knowledge, it is the only song that features in the main plot of the movie, while all the others are just credits afterthoughts. Not that they're bad songs. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. Dog Documentary feature film, I have a feeling will go to Navalny, which won the Critics' Choice Political Documentary, BAFTA, and Producers Guild Awards. It's a topical political documentary that the Academy will eat up. If there's any film that could beat it, it would be Fire of Love, which won the Critics' Choice Do Archival Documentary, Directors Guild, and Ace Eddie. Funnily enough, both films share a producer in common. I've gotten this category correct three out of four times. Documentary short film is another wide open category as usual. I'm going to go with the odds here and predict the Elephant Whispers as the winner. Again, any of the other nominees could win. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. International feature film will, without a doubt, go to All Quiet on the Western Front. It's been a lock since it was nominated for both this award and Best Picture. Despite having ne never seen All Quiet on the Western Front, I would have instead picked RRR, but sadly, it wasn't nominated. I've gotten this category right 100% of the time and don't think that's going to change. Animated film, feature film will 100% go to Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio, which won the Critics' Choice, BAFTA, Annie, Hollywood Critics, and other smaller awards. I would also likely vote for it despite ranking Turning Red higher in, on my year-end list, because I could tell how much work they put into it. I've been correct 100% of the time and also don't think this will change. Makeup and high hairstyling is a big toss-up with plenty of potential options. I'm going to predict Elvis will win the award since it already won the Critics' Choice, BAFTA, and Makeup and Hairstyling Guild for period or character hair and makeup. The biggest contender for this film is The Whale, which won the Hollywood Critics Award and Makeup and Hairstyling Guild for special makeup effects. Elvis did great work for Austin Butler, but did a terrible job on Tom Hanks. The Whale seems to have done a good job with Brendan Fraser, so I think that's more deserving, but I would probably vote for The Batman, since how they transformed Colin Farrell into the Penguin and Barry Keown into the Joker was exquisite. I've gotten this right every time out of the last four years. Production design, I believe, will go to Babylon, since it won the Critics' Choice, Art Directors Guild, BAFTA, and Hollywood Critics Awards. The only potential upset I could see is Elvis, but it's likely minor. I've only gotten this category right 50% of the time. Film editing will likely go to Everything Everywhere All at Once in another well-deserved win since it has the Critics' Choice, BAFTA, Hollywood Critics, and Ace Eddie for com comedic film. The only competition would be Top Gun Maverick, which won the Ace Eddie. I've gotten this right three out of four times. Cinematography was an insane category when the nominations came out because my vote would have gone to Top Gun Maverick, which was not nominated. I will predict All Quiet on the Western Front to win since it won the BAFTA and British Society of Cinematographers Award, although Elvis has a shot since it won the American Society of Cinematographers Award over Top Gun Maverick. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. Visual effects is a 100% lock for Avatar The Way of Water. If anything else wins, the Academy voters are really out of touch because they revolutionized mocap with this being the first time they used it underwater. I've gotten this category correct two out of four times, mainly because the first two times I predicted MCU movie over more prestige films with integrated visual effects. These next two acting categories are big toss-ups between two nominees. For actor in a leading role, I'm predicting it to go to Brandon Fraser over Austin Butler. I know this may be a slightly controversial choice because some people thought he was out of con the conversation, but he's won the Critics' Choice, Hollywood Critics, and Screen Actors Guild Awards, while Austin Butler only won the BAFTA and the Globe. The Globes have such a small body of voters that I can't consider them to be a big influence, and the BAFTAs were more out of touch this year than usual, and weren't as late in the race as they usually are. Austin Butler would be my second choice, though. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. For actress in a leading role, I'm going with my heart and Michelle Yeoh. 
She won the Hollywood Critics and the Screen Actors Guild, while Kate Blanchett, the early frontrunner, won the Critics' Choice and BAFTA. Again, Kate Blanchett would be a good second choice, but and could still win, but Michelle Yeoh has had the momentum going into final voting. I've gotten this category correct two out of four times. Director, I'm going to predict, is going to the Daniels. Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert for Everything Everywhere All at Once. They've won the Critics' Choice, Directors Guild, and Hollywood Critics Awards. They would also get my vote personally since it's my favorite movie of all time. I've gotten this category right three out of four times. For the final and biggest award of the night, Best Picture, I predict Everything Everywhere All at Once to win. It has won the Critics' Choice, Producers Guild, and Hollywood Critics Awards. Its big competition is All Quiet on the Western Front, which won the BAFTA. The way they do this ballot is a preferential ballot, so the way I would vote for them in order from lowest rank to highest rank would be Elvis, The Fablemans, Avatar The Way of Water, The Banshees of Inishirin, Top Gun Maverick, and then on top, everything everywhere all at once. Thank you for watching. What would you predict wins these awards? I'll be back with more as the month goes on, including a potential style switch up. I'm going to be watching the show with bated breath and hot dog fingers.